Hi everyone, it's me, Coffee Stitcher, coming at you from Parts Unknown. Alright, I don't have a whole lot to show in this video. I say that every time and then I still end up going for a while, so we'll just sort of see what happens. So, how's everyone doing? How was your week? I'm good to hear. I'm glad to hear it. And does anybody have big plans for, for Columbus Day? Or as I like to call it, Indigenous Peoples Day, because Columbus Day is the stupidest thing ever. But that's a story for another time. So, all right. Um, well, I do have with updates, um, including one y'all haven't actually gotten to see yet, because it is housed in a different location than where I normally am. Um, so there there will be a whip update there. Um, obviously there's an update on the Poe project. Um, there is uh, a little tiny bit of haul, um, unintentional haul, but haul, um, as well as the next part of Wicked Witch October. Um, so yeah, uh, the dog's looking at me very confused as to who I'm talking to. Good boy, Lane. Good boy. All right, so we'll start with a little bit of Paul. Um, this actually comes, this was a gift um, from the owner of Nifty Needle Nannies, which is a new needle minder group. So it was the very lovely Julie Cannell. I assume it's Cannell, it might be Connell, but I'm assuming Cannell, like, Jane Cannell, the woman who was a theater star in the, sort of, theater star in the 60s. So she started a new group and offered me two, um, two needle minders, uh, just for free, which was very, very nice of her. Um, and she does a great job. I didn't keep the mailing envelope because it was just a generic mailing envelope. But it came in this cute little brown package with a sticker um, for Nifty Needle Nandy, Nannies. And then, as is sort of the, the thing, I guess, it ships on her business card. Um, so, it's a Glinda and a Toto. Um, so, she's based out of St. Paul. Um, I will link her Facebook group down below. Um, her prices are reasonable. Um, she's very friendly. Um, so, while I, I don't know how often I'll buy, since I don't particularly need a lot of um, needle minders right now, um, I would definitely, definitely purchase from her. Um, she's very, very nice, and she's got a very nice selection. Um, and these two are going to go, once I get back to my house, these will go into the, um, the same frame that has my No Place Like Home with the Dorothy needle minder. So, because they're just too pretty to actually use. So, there are those. Um, Alright, so the whip that y'all don't really ever get to see, I worked a little bit on um, my Dimensions kit a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's Balloon Glow. Nope, no oh crap. Two needle minders sticking together. There we go. Um, so, I got part of the middle balloon done. Uh, and it's got the Velma needle binder. So there you go. That would be my, uh, that would be all I have done on Balloon Glow. So once I, if I weren't trying to get Poe finished, I would get more done on this one. So once Poe is done, this will become my primary one when I'm over here. So, nope. Well, that just fell apart. Great. All right, so... Now the one I'm sure you're most anxious to actually see, um, the Poe Project. I got the House of Usher almost completed. I got all the walls done, I got all the bricks done, I'm finishing up the door, which I will hopefully finish today. Then the next window is the Pit and the Pendulum, and then there's just very little left after that. So it's coming along quite nicely. Um, I did a little differently, most of what I've worked on I tend to go horizontally, 
obviously the moon, I worked doing my zigzaggy thing to give the crater effect that with, unfortunately with whitewash, because it's a white and very pale yellow, if you're not in person, it doesn't show up. But it gives the cratery effect like I did on the Samsara. But with the door, I've been doing vertical stitches because I want it to have that wood grain like a door has. So there's that. And then coming with that um, are two, I, because it's me, sorry Remy, um, and I don't ever do anything the way I'm supposed to do things. I am swapping out two of the black, or the black in two spots with two Dragonfly Lotus threads. I will be using Scholarly Text, which is one of the flosses of the month, uh, for the ink coming out of the ink well. And then we're gonna test it, if not Liz and I may be working on something a little different to make it work, but one that's a wool called Moonless Night, the actual black part of the raven himself. Because um, he's got purple wings and it looks really awesome. So, and then I may change out a few other small colors, but basically, not going to be a whole lot of anything. Um, and I'll probably do the raven's eye with a bead. Um, just because that's me. So, anyhow, those are the whip updates. Um, I know, not not a whole lot, and we're already we're only at six minutes. Um, so this one may actually be a genuinely shorter video than normal. Um, so I um I did decide that after I finished Poe, you know, I I did the Sam Sarah last year and didn't do the specialty stitches that were on the bottom of it because they intimidated the hell out of me. Well now specialty stitches don't intimidate the hell out of me. So I think I'm gonna go back and do those and that honestly I can probably whip through in a day, maybe two if I'm really slow. So I think I'm going to do that, and so I can actually really legitimately finish that one. Um, here, this thing can be strange. I can't figure out. Okay, I have one hair that's just being strange. There we go. There it is. Okay, whatever. Y'all are used to me having weird hair. Um, so I think I'll work on that, too. Um, and then I'm not really sure what I'll go for there. I may go back to octopus. I may do something different. Who knows? I'm crazy like that. Um, I may actually pick up the Frosted Pumpkin release, that uh, Sleepy Hollow one. And, yeah, to me it looks a lot like a cuter version of the Glendon Place Sleepy Hollow. But it doesn't have that big moon that I can't stand. Because I've done enough big moons. So I may do it with some tweaks. Um, I was also thinking, because I like, uh, I may try and make, like, Halloween ornaments or something. I don't know. We'll see. It's all going to depend on how much time is left after I finish this. But definitely I will do the Sam Sarah pieces. So. Um. Oh, and I found my missing ginger scissors. Um, they're not here with me. They're at my house. But I did find them. Yay! They were in the floor of my closet for some reason. So. All right. Well, um, I guess that leads us to Wicked Witch October, and there's actually two pieces, because I really didn't have a lot to say about one or the other, but they were both interesting, and I had five things that I wanted to kind of throw out there. So, um, the first is a Wicked Witch drinking glass from the 50th anniversary. Um, now, the fun thing about these was these were sold at... Um, I want to say crystal, primarily in Tennessee and Kansas. Um, and they were a tie-in. Coke actually sponsored these. Um, that was back in the day when Coke did the collector's glasses at fast food restaurants. Collector series 1989. There's a full series set of six, the four friends and the two witches. Um, and the thing about them that's kind of cool, oh, my paint just chipped. Um, so on top of the fact that they're just, they were only in such a small area, so it wasn't really until eBay that they were readily available to people. Um, it was just the fact that they actually did Wizard of Oz drinking glasses. Like, that's how huge the 50th anniversary was for merchandising. So, I thought that was kind of cool. I've never 
used them. I probably won't. They sit on a shelf for decoration. But it's pretty cool. They're also, they've done several Oz drinking glass series, but the witch was only featured in two of them. That one, and then there was an earlier one from the middle 60s, but the witch is ridiculously difficult to come by. Um, like, ridiculously difficult. So, I do not have that one. The other one is kind of a... This, for any of you, the the basically anyone not over the age of about 20, you're going to go, what is this? Um, but in 19, I believe it was 1988, yeah. 1988, they did another VHS release issue of Wizard of Oz. This, I believe, is the third VHS issue. Um, and this one heavily features everybody's favorite witch. And it's interesting because they used the image of her from the Thorpe era before before Victor Fleming took over the majority of the film. Richard Thorpe directed it. He direct, was going to direct the film, and he did three scenes. He did the cornfield with Dorothy being Scarecrow. He did the witch's castle, and I believe the transitionary return from the witch's castle, which was ultimately cut. Uh, and at that point, the witch had long hair, and that was really the biggest change in her makeup, was she went from having long hair to the hair up in the bun. Dorothy underwent the biggest overhaul. She had this blonde wig and a fancy dress, and she looked more like Alice in Wonderland than what we think of as Dorothy. And then Thorpe got let go because the studio wasn't happy with how it was looking, and George Cukor came in and said, Dear God, we have to make her look like an actual girl from Kansas, not a blonde male Mary Pickford. And so that was when we got the look that we know. So they chose that, and interestingly, that... This image, which was sort of cobbled together, but those that picture of the witch resurfaces fairly regularly. Um, a lot of the times it's fixed with the magic of Photoshop to look like the correct hairstyle, but this shows up fairly often. And then also of interest to somebody, maybe, the font used on this resurfaced in the mid-90s on the reissue of the multi-toys, action figures, and dolls under the Sky Kids label. So the font got recycled. Um, and I don't think I've seen it used since then. Um, but this was only out for 19, the year of 19, the calendar year of 1988, because in 1989, they replaced it with the 50th anniversary edition. So of the Oz VHS tapes, this one was in the most limited run. And so therefore, it doesn't turn up terribly often. So it's kind of a cool little thing that they featured the witch heavily on one box. So she wouldn't get featured again, and even then it's only in silhouette, until uh, 2005 for the 65th or whatever it was. So anyhow, um, I think that's really kind of everything for today. We'll be working more on Poe. Oh, um, to the people who offered to model stitchers, I've reached out to most of you. Um, I had enough volunteers that I don't actually need any more. Um, the I've seen my the scissor fob done up. Um, thank you to Miss Hannah. Um, it looked a lot better than I really thought it was going to, and she did. We we've done a little bit of tweak to it. So if the rest turns out as well as the fob did, then I will probably be doing a little more designing and then some releasing. So we'll see. Uh, anyhow, I hope everyone's having a great weekend. Enjoy. If you have Indigenous People of America Day off tomorrow, please enjoy it. If you don't have it off, I'm very sorry. Um, I have it off, and I'm kind of thrilled about that. So, yeah. So, anyhow, I will see you all later.